when it comes to my presentation about Wiki Toolkit, a toolkit for building Wikis in Perl. My name is Stefan Hornbock, and I'm a full-time Perl hacker. Most of the time I'm caring for Interchange, an open source e-commerce solution written in Perl. Two years ago, we put the Moin Moin Wiki on our website, and I was fairly impressed with it. I liked it, but still it's written in Python. And the last year, it ceased working after a Debian upgrade. I tried to fix it quickly, but my knowledge about Python and Moin Moin wasn't very great, and I wasn't able to complete the task. So I was motivated to look for a Perl wiki, which, is, which have a modern architecture, is flexible, and easy to use. So I came across Wiki Toolkit, which fulfills the first and the second requirement, not the last one. It is certainly flexible. It allows you to pick the tools of your trade. You can use various storage backends. You can pick the formatter you like, the wiki format, and also supplies you with search and a number of plugins for wiki toolkit. So, but uh, wiki toolkit is an instant wiki. That means you have to write some glue around it or integrate it in your application, in web application, or write some code with your framework to get a standalone wiki from it. It was a bad idea for me because I think I can benefit and our users can benefit from integrating the wiki, wiki code and the wiki data with the web application and the e-commerce e-commerce application. Okay, I also checked which, uh, which applications are based on Wiki Toolkit. I found not that much. Uh, one you probably know of is, uh, or you, you probably have to use, is the Wiki in the ACP conference toolkit which is used for all Jepsi conferences, also for this Perl Oasis. This wiki is based on Wiki Toolkit. The other project is Open Guides. This is an application for city guides, which basically funded the development for Wiki Toolkit. The first thing I have I would like to talk about the architecture of Wiki Toolkit. To start your Wiki, you have to select some tools, and these are the following categories. You have to select the storage backend. These are a number of uh, database engines I talk about later. And next, you want to have a formatter, which takes your text in wiki format and produces HTML output for your website. There are also a number of formatters you can choose from. Um, for further enhancing your wiki toolkit website, there are a number of plugins which I will address. And searching is also important. There are searching backends for wiki toolkit. And last but not least, you have to put some glue around the toolkit to make it work, to bring it to your to users. And I will show you some basic functions of the toolkit at the beginning of my talk. Okay, this example. The first one is the storage backend. For this example, I selected my SQL, but there's also Postgres and SQL Lite available. You just pass the database name and the database user and the database password. And you have an object for your storage backend. Next thing, you want uh, an object for your formatter. In this example, I use the use mode formatter. You don't have to specify a formatter. There's a default formatter 
which only covers the basic functions for picky formatting. And to uh, bring a search to your users, you instantiate an object for your for a search backend. In this example, I use the DBX full text search. And all these objects you are passing to the constructor of Wiki Toolkit, store for motor search. And now you have your Wiki object, it can start to uh, write pages, display pages, and do all the tasks what the Wiki can do. The Wiki Toolkit Wikis consist of nodes, which is basically the same as the Wiki page. And the most important things for nodes, of course, the content. Uh, the node has a version, so you can follow all the steps in the edit process. You have a checksum. I cover this a little bit later. And you can also have meta metadata for your node. Okay, what you have to, have to do for creating a node, I'm calling the write node method, it supplies the name of the node, some wiki text, and if you want to, some metadata. So you have your first page in the wiki. Now you want to display it. First of all, you retrieve node with the retrieve node method, and passing the name and the version of the node, and it gives you a hash with all the information which is stored in the database or the backend. And this node uh, hash you, you just passing to the format method, which does, does all the um, templating and replacing the format instructions. And this output can be used to display a, a part of your web page. <coughs> so after that, you want to uh, update your page with new information or fixing mistakes. This can also be done with the write node method. Uh, it has basically the same signature than, the, than for the case where you're creating the node. You just have to pass the checksum, which you got from the, in the hash, in the node hash. And this uh, ensures that no, not two, two people are editing, editing at the same time. If another one has edited the page in this, uh, before you, the write node function will, will retrieve your, uh, to return an empty value. So you see you have a conflict, and now you have to uh, resolve the conflict on your own. This is not done by Wiki Toolkit. Uh, this is if you do by yourself. When you, this, when you write node for the first time, what's your input for the checksum? So the, the first time you leave it out. Uh, under like in the first example. Oh, it's undefined. Okay. Where do you get your text? Dollar text. What's in there? Where? How do you get there? Uh, from a form. Okay. User editing a form, and he has to follow, of course, the conventions for the wiki format you're using. Okay, the storage. As I said, Wiki uh, Toolkit supports currently the storage backends MySQL, Postgres, and SQLite. You can also easily add other storage backends. There's a base class for these uh, backends. And you have to implement the functions. I don't think it's very complicated if you say use an Oracle or some, something else. Before you start to use your wiki, you have to uh, set up the database. You can, there's a class wiki toolkit set up MySQL, also for the other backends, where you just uh, pass the database parameters and if you create all the tables you need, which are. There's the content table. This stores the information about the nodes, the version, the text, the version number, and so on. The metadata, 
The table is uh, the store for the metadata, which I explained in the data, and the table internal links. All the links between the wiki pages are stored. This is done by uh, <coughs> wiki toolkit and its formatters automatically. You don't have to care for that. And schema info simply uh, consists of the version of the database schema. So if you run the setup another time, uh, it will know which kind of tables are there. The metadata has a simple format. You're just passing a hash. The file is like country is USA and state is Florida. And this hash you pass to the white node method as reference. And if you retrieve the node, if you retrieve node, you get the metadata back in the metadata key. Uh, one thing you have to note is that. Um, all the data is not in the same hash format as is in the first line. It's always stored in hash uh, references. So that's the reason I have this rule there. Because you would usually expect it's just a hash, hash to get back, but if you look up the key and the value, you have to you have only an error reference. The reason for this is uh, that you can also pass error references uh, in, the, in the metadata hash. The formatter classes are very simply constructed. They usually have only two functions, two methods. The first method is a format method which takes the wiki text and changes into uh, returns the HTML for this wiki text and the format you're using. This is the only required method for a formatter for wiki toolkit. And usually they all have the find internal links method. So the wiki toolkit can run the content through it and see which links are pointing to other documents in the wiki. You construct the wiki toolkit formatter with some common options. You have an option for extended links that usually the links in the brackets. It's set to zero, so if you want to allow your users uh, to use extended links, you have to pass one in the one in the for extended links into the constructor. And the implicit links uh, set to one. Implicit links in uh, the words in the camel case, where you, have, uh, where you lose two or more words with the white space taking out and making all capitals at the beginning. Then you can also allow HTML text in your wiki text. And you have to pass this in the hello text hash key. By default, uh, the formatters usually don't allow H HTML text. And you can set up only macros, all the macros, which I'll show you in the next slide. And important for, for your glue is the node prefix. This is used for the links inside the wiki nodes when you display them so they can they point to the correct URL. Macros are just a way to embed simple uh, placeholders in your wiki text and they get replaced by some arbitrary text. In this example you have a add search box and this is just a regular expression, and if this regular expression is found in the wiki, wiki text, it will replace with the 
of the text you supply as well. There are a number of formatters in CPAN written for Wiki Toolkit. This is Wiki Toolkit uh, formatter and media wiki, use mode, markdown, and POD. The POD formatter is uh, it's a bit older. It stems from the time when Wiki Toolkit was named CGI Wiki, and as far as I know, it's not uh, updated to the well, it doesn't have changed namespace to Wiki Toolkit. But I still I don't know if it works. Yes? How difficult would it be to implement a new um, formatter? For instance, let's say you wanted a formatter that would take the shape of an outline. Would that be really difficult? Uh, in general, no. I will, I will come to this in two slides, but... Uh, it depends how complex your formatting is, but if you have simple formatting, it's uh, not really difficult. A cool feature of this is that you can have uh, multiple formatters. If you have a big wiki and you want to have a part of the pages in a different wiki format than others, you can use the uh, multiple formatter. And this works as follows. You, are, you choose your formatter you want to be in your multiple formatter space. In this example, I'm <coughs> using the use mode and the media wiki formatter. So I have two objects, and I pass them to the uh, multiple formatter and the constructor. So with this keyword use mode, points to the use mode formatter, media wiki to the media wiki formatter, and there's a special keyword, underscore default. Uh, this is a default formatter for the multiple formatter. So if you're going to format your node, you say wiki format um, text, it's a wiki text, and then pass a as a hash reference, where you point the format to media wiki. And if you pass no format, it takes the default format. And what is especially good is that you can also leave it out, but if you pass the metadata and you store in the metadata the format, the format name, for instance, use mode or media wiki. I will automatically display uh, the kind of formatter which is in this in the string. So you, you don't have to always uh, specify the formatter. If you are putting into the metadata when you're creating the node or updating the node, Wiki Toolkit and the multiple formatter will know in which format this particular node is written. Okay. Yeah, that's the, the source code for that. You say metadata format is media wiki, and why it's not with the metadata. And then you format it to go, just have to pass the metadata as well and use the correct format. If you want to write a custom formatter, for example, for some of the other wiki formats, which are existing more and more in local wiki, there are, I don't know, hundreds of them, <laughs> at least a lot of them, uh, you create a class wiki toolkit formatter foo, or whatever the name is, and the only thing which is really needed is the format method. So you can, can run your regular expressions in there, what you want to do, and uh, what comes in handy for that is the text, text wiki format module, which also this uh, format I, I told about, the media wiki and use mode format is using, and this allows you to uh, write the formatting method much easier. 
because it knows about all the basic wiki syntax and you can configure it. How the, yes? Are you saying your subclass of text wiki format to write your own formatter? Or, no, that couldn't be it. You're, sub, you're subclassing wiki toolkit formatter, right? Uh, you're inheriting from um, wiki toolkit formatter? No, in this case you don't need to inherit because there's no uh, need for it because you only supply this format function, format method, and maybe the file internal links method. So there's no subclassing, but you can, of course, can uh, call wiki, text wiki format and pass options for your format, like which uh, texts are allowed, how your external links look like, and so on. And of course, you have to do some logic, but it's much easier as if you would, would write to from sketch. Okay, does it answer your questions about writing a formatter? Right. Yes. Okay. Now we come to the search, and there are two search backends, which are part of the wiki toolkit distribution. The first is the backend for the search inverted index, the wiki toolkit search SII, and the second one is the, is the Backend for the BBIX full text search module. So that's it. And you also have to start to set up your search backend in the case of DBIX uh, full text search. You can write into the script using this setup class for EBX uh, text search, just passing your database parameters and then we create the indexes, one moment, we create the indexes which the full text search are using in your database, and when you later update a node, uh, wiki toolkit will automatically update the index, yes? Um, you've got your password in your code, so, am I correct that if you're on a machine, if, if you're on a shared server, you know, like they have at ISPs and stuff, other people on that server can see that password? Um, yeah, but if they have the permissions, but this is only a, you use it only one time for the setup. But there's no way to have that, you, you've got to have it readable by the user who's running Apache or whatever, right? Is that correct? No, this is just a script you are executing before you're starting the search backend. So you run it and erase it. After the search indexes are set up, you erase that file that has the password. But, but then what happens the next time you run it? It's not there anymore. That, that's a common problem with any program that's connected to a database. You have to have some way to authenticate. And, and you know, short of running something that stores it in memory uh, every time you reboot the machine, um, it's going to be stored in your code. So you use permissions to manage it. Because I mean, it would be in your in your wiki.cgi too, right? I mean, you have to have a way to connect to the database. Yeah. Wiki.cgi. That's just how it is. But I've heard of some way. I mean, that that code has to be readable by the user that that. That's running Apache, right? Unless they use a, some kind of a, um, they can they can use different users for different different accounts. Yeah, if they do that. There's no problem. Yeah, so you're just a good, good hoster. Okay. All right, I understand. Yeah. Just another note. Uh, uh, Wiki Toolkit has some small programs which are used uh, for the setup stuff, but. In them, you have, they are com command line applications with these Perl scripts, and there you pass the uh, passwords as command line parameters, which is uh, not good because every user which has access to the process list and stuff can see them.
durch deine Sorgen. Okay, after you initialize it, you go in the usual way and getting a storage backend, your MySQL storage backend up, and then you are using this, uh, creating a search object. It's a wiki toolkit search DBX FDS. And there you pass the DBH, the database header, which you can read from the store, in the store backend. And then you can get simply run a search and retrieve all nodes which are matching oases. Okay. The last subjects are clients. Okay. There are a number of plugins for Wiki Toolkit. For this example, I use the div plugin, which provides you with a difference between two versions. So you can show it in your wiki. It's not, uh, not a basic feature of Wiki Toolkit. So there's a plugin for that. If you want to use a plugin, you are first going to register it. It's a register plugin method where you pass a plugin object and then you can use the plugin. So it needs to be registered so the client can pull out the information out of, out of the storage backend. And the client can have any number of methods. In this case, you're passing the node name and the two versions you want to compare with. And it gives you, it gives you a, a hash with all the chunks of, of the diff. And this chance can be used and put it on the web page. Okay, these are the available plugins in CPAN. Um, I mentioned div. The categorizer plugin is used for category management. Of course, you can just do your own category management from inside the metadata, but this is a helper module for that. And then you have the JSON plugin. Wiki Toolkit has also the function which gives you the re recent changes of a node. And this plugin enables you to put it also JSON. The fourth is the locator grid. This manage co coordinate data. Uh, this is uh, used by the open guides wikis, so you can show the locations. The ping plugin pings various services on node updates, so if you write a new node, you can let the services know that there's an update in your wiki, and then they can put in their activator or whatever. And finally, ask as reader, retrieves feeds for node inclusion. Okay, of course you can write your own plugins. Uh, I didn't have a slide for it, but it's <coughs> not hard to do it. Okay. So my presentation is at the end. You can find, find this wiki toolkit in the CPAN. It's also our own website, mainly for development and bug tracking. The talk, the talk is also, the site is also online. You don't have to write down the URL. I have uh, put it in the <coughs> ACT. And do you have any more questions? What is the difference between the search? What does SII stand for? Uh, the difference is uh, search and web. <coughs> it's basic uh, bytes and index file. Not the full text. It's full text, but it's not a uh, database driven. Okay. That's the difference to the DBX uh, search backend. So the, this is one point which is interesting in uh, a wiki toolkit. You can quickly uh, set up a wiki with formatting and uh, storage backend and search without a real database. You can use SQLite as storage backend and you can use the inverted index for the search. Yeah. 
And what is typical metadata? Like, would you say this article describes a movie, and that would be in the metadata? Or um, last person in terms of Sorry. Last person update, original author. Category it's not specific to the topic. Could, you know. could be anything, right? Yeah. Could put the title. You could put a title in metadata. Could you use that metadata? I know you used it to choose a formatter, but could you choose a like a format template? Like if you said this is a person, then the formatter would know it expects an address and telephone number. It's up to your implementation of Wiki Toolkit. Okay. So basically, you can store. Uh, anything which is representative as a scalar or as area reference, you can put into the metadata. And you can do what you like with it if, uh, if the formatter supports it. But you can also um, retrieve the node, so you have the content and the metadata, pass it to the formatter, and then you can, in addition, look at your metadata and display extra information on your page. The only the special thing I am aware of is this is formatter metadata keyword, which uh, Wiki Tooltip takes as a formatter for this uh, node. Sure. Okay. Anything else?